Hello, my name is Nathan Epstein, and this is my final computer vision project, learning and visualizing Go using structure versus noise classification. Motivation. Go is a very interesting game. It's very complicated and a good uh, application for computer vision techniques like CNNs. Uh, also, with this project, I wanted to get experience visualizing networks because that's becoming increasingly important. Um, many machines actually exceed human performance even human expert performance, so understanding what they're doing becomes uh, increasingly important in that case. So learning, uh, what, am I, what am I training? What, uh, I'm training two classifiers, an easy one and a hard one. This here is the easy one. So the easy one gets a fully random board, all these moves are random coordinates, as class zero, and then a fully structured board as class one. And I want to be able to tell which is which. Um, these, these are the players here. The hard task is both boards are mainly professional games. However, the class zero has one random move added, whereas the class one is fully the canonical record. So this is a much more subtle task. It's much harder. But uh, for, m for my purposes of evaluating the board, it's uh, important to be able to do this with just one move. So uh, what's the structure of the network? This is my network. It's a very rudimentary network, uh, and it's engineered that way because I want to be able to look at all these weights and all these layers um, after it's been trained, sort of understand what it's doing. So there uh, aren't that many network, uh, neurons. It's 40, 20, 10, 10 for the convolutional layers, and then some fully connected layers, uh, 30, 32, and that's basically the entire network. A pretty, pretty simple network. So how did it perform? Um, here I'm comparing it with a linear SVM in both the easy task and the hard task. The linear SVM outperforms the multi-layer CNN, which is my network, at the easy task. And I think this discrepancy is mainly because the data set is smaller and the multi-layer CNN needs a larger data set to train. But in that, in that limited data set that I prepared for that task, uh, the linear SVM performs pretty well. Moving on to the hard task, the linear SVM is having uh, has some trouble classifying. It can't. It's a very nonlinear uh, classification. So it's this is this is around uh, chance performance, and uh, the multi-layer CNN with more room to train more data performs better with the the seventy percent classification rate, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, so using this hard task, uh, I can go and visualize what the network's doing. Looks at the board. So if it's just operating on, a sing on the position of a single move, that means I can move a single stone around and try to find regions with strong positive response and strong negative response. So a move in this position, this here is Guli versus AlphaGo, the whole board, except for these two moves here and here. Um, these are moves that the network has found, one that has a strong positive response, so it thinks that this is a professional move, and one with a strong negative response, so it's very sure that this is not a professional move. And this is, uh, you can find the, the confidence in the class by comparing the outputs of the two, of the two neurons, the two output neurons. So this is a very high professional output, very low random output, and for this, the opposite. Uh, to visualize what I want to do, I want to look at the deep convolutional layers because this is where I'm going to find some sort of semantic meaning in the in activation. Uh, so this is that output. These are paired to these two boards. So here we can see a strong activation for, um, for the random looking move. Uh, and here we can see that there isn't really much activation for the professional looking move. So it seems like semantically this layer the conv7 neuron is activating in regions where it's perceiving anomalous moves, and that's going to help it figure out if the board has a random move on it or not. Um, so that seems to be semantically what's happening here. And again, these two uh, pair to these two. So this move and this move, there and there. All right, and that's uh, that's all my time. I have a little bit more visualization, but I will. Um, you have to watch the longer one to see that.